so when remembering the world around you, uh, you don't only have to remember features such as colors and shapes, but also which features go together. For instance, you might want to remember if you took uh, a red round pill or a yellow oval one as part of your daily medication. And in an experimental setting, uh, if we ask you to remember this white cross and you mix up its color with that of the black circle presented right next to it, that would be a feature binding error. And previous studies have found that individuals who are about to develop Alzheimer's disease are much more likely to make this type of error. Um, so therefore, this type of task can be used uh, to predict if someone is likely to develop Alzheimer's or not. Uh, but then some other studies uh, challenged this notion uh, because they found in their experiment healthy older adults also made this type of feature binding error. So this is where my study comes in. Um, because these studies have used different types of stimuli. Some of them used 360 colors on a color wheel, and others just uh, six quite typical standard colors. Uh, but the question is, can we really assume that remembering these colors on the top here um, and the, these shapes will rely on the same cognitive mechanism as remembering uh, these items down here? Because as you might have noticed, uh, some of these are intended to be easy to name, whereas others are more difficult to name. So these uh, are some suggestions offered by participants when asked to name this specific shade over here. Um, and decades of research suggests that memory for verbal information is quite different uh, for, uh, compared to memory for visually presented information. And crucially, uh, in cognitive aging, these two memories decline at very different rates. So verbal memory remains relatively intact. Um, so our intention is to uh, study a healthy older adults and see when we prevent or enable verbal encoding if they make these types of feature binding errors. Um, and the purpose of this is to inform future studies in making better color and shape choices and to see if we can find the key to the discrepancies in previous studies and hopefully uh, perfect this task as a potential diagnostic tool for Alzheimer's disease. Thank you. Thank you.